Hello, everybody. Good morning. Um, my name is Jason Copeland. I work for Optex in the Vehicle Sensing Division. Um, you guys resell our products and uh, are a great partner of ours. And um, I wanted to introduce myself. Uh, we also have two other people since the last time um, I did a presentation for you guys. Uh, I will I will bring up later um, where you can find their contact information. But there's two two more. One, uh, I'm on the West Coast. Uh, Daniel uh, Davis is in the Central Time Zone, uh, based out of uh, Texas, and then we have John Sumner on the East Coast, uh, based out of Virginia. So he would be the closest point of contact for you guys. Uh, but you know, I know you guys sell across the U.S., so we definitely would support whatever you guys need in that zone. So we're very well covered now to um, make sure we take care of you guys' needs. Um, Amy, is can you guys hear me okay? Thumbs up, possibly. Um, is everything coming across okay? Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and proceed. Okay, there we go. Thank you. All right. So um, where Optex comes into play is um, I'm going to bring up, I'm going to share my screen and um, just show you what we basically are designed to uh, replace to be a better mousetrap. Um, and let me go ahead and share my screen here. And this one right here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to blow this up a little bit. So you guys, I'm sure I'm using this from the um, Door King um, installation manual on basic information for uh, automated gates and barrier arms. Where we're going to replace is underground loops and loop detectors, uh, or is the terminology. And I'm sure you guys um, sell a lot of these. And so, where these are going to come into play is uh, you see them on a sliding gate. They also come into play on a on a swing gate as well. So they're they're actually cut in the ground. Um, they they put wires in circuit like that or preformed to where they're going to detect uh, whatever an, um, an amount of metal that goes over them is going to actually alert them to uh, either open the gate from this zone or to uh, reverse the gate and not allow it to close on a vehicle from these two zones. Um, so basically, the primary function of these devices are for vehicle protection or exiting a gate, primary function. And so uh, what, what comes along with these uh, ground cut loops is that and there's quite a bit of labor involved. Um, obviously, you see all these are buried. Um, in order to get these into the ground, you actually have to cut a, a channel into the ground and um, and bury these. And then on top of that, they actually put this um, you know sticky material, almost like a silicone, over the top to seal it. Because if water gets in there, it can actually cause them to either fail completely or, you know, act and be inconsistent. So um, there's a lot of labor. Uh, the average job from talking to dealers is going to be somewhere between four to six hours, um, you know, uh, cutting a couple loops on these and then sealing them and letting for them to dry. Um, also, the cleanup as well. Um, when you when you cut these channels into the concrete or asphalt or whatever you're cutting them into, um, creates a lot of um, really microscopic debris that can um, cause breathing hazards. Um, as far as OSHA is concerned, there's a certain protocol on cleaning this up so that it's safe for people to be in there and not let it go into the water cycle. Um, so ground loops in general have been used for a very long time. It's a very uh, stable um, technology, been around for a very long time. And a lot of the guys that are installing gates out there this is their go-to because that's what they've always done. Um, very hard uh, on your back, a, a lot of bending over, cutting. Um, you know, when you're filling this the, the silicone in, it's it's just a lot of a lot of labor involved in this and time. Now, what we've done is we've uh, come up with a, like I said before, a better mousetrap, a better device in order for activating or uh, reversing on a vehicle. And so this is a basic over picture here. Uh, our sensor would be mounted to the side of the road uh, over here on the edge. It can be mounted near the operator. It also can be mounted off the operator a little way, a little ways away um, where you would um, you know, pick up for exit. Now, how it works is uh, it's got two technologies in it. Uh, one of them is a microwave and one is an ultrasonic, the short range here. 
And the microwave sensor can actually sense out, it can go from seven feet out to 18 feet. And um, the short range can see up to five feet. Uh, the short range ultrasonic sensor is primarily used in parking situations, but um, the, ultra, the, the microwave, the long range sensor is used in all functions from barrier arms, uh, overhead roll up gates in, in parking, um, automated gates, both slide, swing, articulating, uh, or folding, we can work in all those different zones for vehicle protection or for an exit loop, replacing this technology and the labor that's a, that's a, a associated with it. Now, where I want to start, so that's a basic overview of the product that we have that we, you will primarily be selling. Where I want to start, though, is showing you where you can actually find the most details along with using us as a resource. Uh, our website is very well tuned into finding the details you'll need. Um, if you go to optex-vs.com, that's our main page for our vehicle sensing division. And so by going to that site, um, it's going to bring you up as, uh, it's going to come up as OVS01GT as the primary device. And that is like 90% of our sales in the vehicle sensing division. So this is the main one you will have questions on and use the most. Now, as far as the GT, um, it's going to be, like I said, it's going to reach out. Um, so all of the ground cutting that you've uh, seen associated with the ground loops, it goes away. The only um, actual part of the install would be uh, mounting either something to hold the post up. We, we have accessories that I'll get into later. Uh, mounting this to the, to the drive or, or to the curb and then running um, – two pair of wires, one for power and one for the signal in, in common of the initial trigger that actually makes the sensor reverse the gate. So two pair of wires from this point to the operator. And really that's the only amount of, um, you know, install there's going to be. Um, and in the back of our accessories, we actually have a, uh, we have a port on the back of our, of our, post um, here that are, that are already made, ready to go, where it actually has, you could do a flex tube from the back of this of the um, the mount, and then not even have to bury the wire. So you could run a flex tube from wherever the pole's mounted to the operator so that the install is really, really easy on the, on the dealers. And, um, you know, as far as when we were going and, and designing, getting this product ready for sale, we talked to a lot of dealers and their biggest pet peeve out of all of the installs and all the things they have to do with is ground cut loops. And that's really what caused us to design this sensor to solve their pain on cutting ground loops. Um, our sensor, this is it right here, it's the OVS01GT. Um, it basically uh, has a, a top cover that's held on by one screw. The one screw is right underneath this on the bottom. Um, it has a keeper. You only have to loosen it out about halfway. And then this cover lifts off, which would expose the sensor on the internal and the back of the housing. Um, all the programming is done right from the board here. This is a, a blow up of this board that's above the sensor that's hidden behind this uh, outer housing. All the programming is done here by pushing um, the LEDs to toggle between the settings and then the sensitivity. And then this is the part where you tell it how far you want it to send out to. Uh, up to you know seven foot to 18 feet and then it's configurable either normally open or normally closed right from the board on whatever the operator is using most uh most gates are going to be looking for normally open circuit but when you get into barrier arms um they kind of change and you, sometimes you will need a normally closed circuit um it also has a setting here to tell it whether you're looking at the side of vehicles like at the door or if you're looking at vehicles as they drive up um, and that is key to however you lay it out. So if you're using this as an exit loop and you have it pointed out to the front of vehicles, um, you would want it to be an activation. If you're looking at the side of the cars as they drive past our sensor, you'd want it in vehicle protection, very key. And then there's a calibration uh, button here to calibrate after you do the, the basic programming settings. Um, you know, I do a lot of tech support calls and I can get guys dialed in in under five minutes. Um, if I explain step by step what I'm doing, I can get it done in 15 minutes, uh, but very easy programmable um, to get it dialed into whatever specifically they're working on. This would be on the back side of the sensor. 
there's a uh, right below right here above below this strip there's a terminal that it has basically this right here that's kind of blown up so there's going to be six um, terminal strips the the left two are just for power and very specific um, our sensor requires 12 or 24 volt DC only very specific uh, I have guys constantly putting AC to the board and you can burn up the board by doing that so make note of that uh, 12 or 24 volt DC um, and then the output is where you're going to take this to the operator. So these two terminals are the ones that's going to cause either you're going to go directly to the operator board, either on the exit loop or on the reverse interrupt loop or the shadow loop or center loop. Uh, we can cover all those zones, but that's the sensor that's going to go out to the operator. Um, and so very simple wiring, very simple programming. Um, and a very simple install. And you see how it could be a, such an advantage to your dealers when they are doing uh, gates and they may not have even heard of it. So the, the best question to ask would be is, um, you know, guys are ordering ground loops. Hey, how are those ground loops working out for you? Do, do you like cutting the ground loops? Do you want to see an alternative? Um, we are going to be, the upfront cost of our OBS 01 GT will be more than what a ground loop, uh, the material for ground loop will cost probably double, but the difference is, is when you calculate the install, the uh, the cost of the materials and the time, we're gonna actually, it's either gonna break even or we're gonna be cheaper when you add all that together between total cost of install uh, and, and the headache of not having to spend the four to six hours there on the site, getting those ground loops up to speed and, and, and sealed correctly. Um, so a true, really a good advantage there for your dealers and it, and they will thank you in the long run when, once they find out, because I've had guys after they found out about our product, just say, Hey, I will never cut another ground loop. If I have anything to say about it, be just because this is so much more simple, can do the same exact thing. And it just makes their life easier. So just make sure your dealers are aware of our product because a lot of them haven't heard of it. It's only been sold for uh, about four and a half to five years. So in as far as the market goes, ground loops have been sold probably for 50 years. So there's guys that just haven't, haven't heard about the product and, and, and uh, they can be very confident. We sell 900 of these a month. We do, these are out there in the field. They're thoroughly tested. Um, you, can bear, you, can, you can confidently point them to these as a replacement for ground loops and to, to trust them. So a very, very good in that stage there. Um, as far as uh, I had mentioned the mounts. So we have, we have two styles of mounts. You see the taller ones here um, are at designed to be right to the drive surface so that the manual recommends our sensor being mounted at 20 inches from the bottom of the sensor to the drive surface. And so if this were right on the road, that's the post we would use that puts this right at 20 inches. Um, now, if you were mounting this on a curb, these are made to design for exactly that. So that when they're standing on a curb, it'll be 20 inches from the bottom of the sensor to the drive surface below the curb. So very easy to remember there. They basically just come in yellow and black. Uh, and it's, um, you know, for as far as these, they're, they're pre-drilled. They're, uh, they come with the hardware. They have the, the uh, flex tube port on the back for half inch uh, EMT tubing. Um, so it, it basically makes you, the dealers install even more simple if you sell them these accessories that are uh, ready to go. Uh, for a little more protection, you also could get the, um, they call this the uh, HD cage. Basically, it's a it's a, a powder coated uh, metal form that goes right over the top that would see that would cinch right to the uh, the post itself. Or if you're putting it on the lead edge of the of the gate, you know, it would go right to there and has tabs to hold it in place if you wanted a little extra protection. If there were uh, ever a case where you uh, they wanted to mount this on something um and needed just like a right angle so that they could mount the sensor looking straight at the road or you know across the road if say if you're putting this on a gooseneck and you needed mounting options we also have this and it's called um the uh l bracket or uh, lbbl is what l uh, l bracket black is what that stands for and so it also is pre-drilled comes with the hardware and it also has a wiring 
port that's that's protected in a metal channel from behind that your wiring would go straight out of our sensor right to whatever you're mounting it to um, and protects the wiring on that side as well. So this is an option um, as far as, you know, if they have a challenging spot, they're putting that in. That's the one uh, that would set, make their job a lot easier. Now, as far as um, what we can do, uh, our sensor, when we go to optexvs.com, um, you're going to see this being the homepage. Uh, if you need to find out what sensors we have available and under that, that category, there's the main one, OVS 01 GT that I've been talking about. There's also a car counting version that's used in parking solutions. We have also an... Um, uh, this is, is for industrial doors or in parking situations. It's mounted above the sensor, above the lane. Uh, it, but you, this does need to be about mounted above the lane. So for automated gates, it usually doesn't come into play. But this is a very unique sensor that I'll touch on a little bit here in a minute. There's also our OVS-50 TNR. This is our true uh, photo beam that actually is a monitored UL325 compliant beam. And so it's showing it here, looking across the pinch point of, of a gate opening. Uh, can detect, um, obviously, it can cover a 50-foot range. It has two beams on the inside that actually communicate point to point from transmitter to receiver. And so anything that breaks both of those beams is going to make the, the gate reverse and, and not allow it to close on a person or a vehicle. Um, this is a product I don't believe you guys have sold a whole lot of, uh, but these are the, it, it is going to be the best UL325 device out there. As far as uh, the second pin, pain point for dealers when we were talking to them was uh, the reflective technology of UL325 beams. So whether our competitors, most of them are going to be sending a signal from the transmitter. It bounces off a reflective surface and back to the sensor. That, that's their second biggest pain point because of if the, the lens on that reflector gets dirty, uh, if the the lens on this side gets dirty, that will end up holding the gate open and not allowing it to close in cases of like a lot of rain or fog or frost or snow. Um, and um, that is the they said that when we talked to them, their number one service call was the reflective technology holding the gate open. As far as when they go out, what they basically do is they go out and they put. They clean the reflector, spray some rain -X on it, and then it's a service call. Our sensor will not have that. It, it eliminates that. It's designed to eliminate all those different environmental uh, factors. So it's going to be it's going to be the premium. This will be the best one out there. But by the time you eliminate one service call, this will be cheaper. And once they put it in the first time, they're not going to have to go back out there to monitor it. Uh, it also has something very unique. Um, the transmitter side is um, is battery operated. It actually takes two industrial D batteries um, that go in that column uh, right below there in this column. And then the receiver would be hardwired back to the operator, uh, both the power and the signal wire. But the transmitter, the other side of the lane is going to be battery operated with these two uh, industrial D batteries. And the the life in the field for these batteries is going to be eight years. And it's been thoroughly tested on that because this is a product we brought from our security division that is always on 24-7, always being monitored. And uh, we're getting a, a constant, a consistent eight years of battery life out of these sensors uh, using those D batteries. Um, as far as the receiver side, uh, like I said, it's, it's going to be hardwired directly to your operator on the, the interrupt or the reverse loop. And it is a, a, a monitored circuit. So on normally open, it's going to be a 10K resistor. And then on normally closed, it's going to be a power cycling. So it has either one for whatever the operator that they're working on is, is needs to, to reverse that loop. Um, so I, I really want you guys to also, um, you know, do your, do your dealers a favor and just let them know that this exists because uh, ask them how their, their UL... 325 technology is working. If it's a headache, if it, they have a lot of callbacks on it, and you'll you'll start to hear the same thing over and over again. If it's, it's a constant problem, and this will make their their life easier. Um, Amy, let's see here. I just want to make sure. Um, 
Let me stop sharing for a second. Amy, um, how's everything going so far? Are there any questions? Yeah, does anyone have any questions? You can type it in the box. It looks like we might have one question. It says, does it work with LiftMaster monitor standards? Short answer is yes, but the complicated answer is LiftMaster for their primary UL325 device is proprietary. You must use their device. Ours can be a supplemental safety on you on LiftMaster devices, but supplemental, not primary. That's very key. Uh, because LiftMaster made it proprietary, we can't be the main, we can't be the primary zone for life safety on their on their gates. Secondary, absolutely. I believe that answered your question there. That's the only question we have so far, Jason. Okay. All right. So um, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, share again, and then I'm going to um, I'm going to bring up I'm going to bring up um, our website again. So optics-vs.com, and this will help you guys whenever you're coming into uh, if if your dealers need like a, a visual example or even like help on wiring. Um, this is going back to our OVS 01 GT, so covering most install options. So this right here under support, you're going to see wiring and install guides. Now under install guides, they're going to be able to go to our website and get a, a, a basically a tech sheet, tech drawing. that's going to show them options they have as far as installing our sensor. Um, this would be for an exit loop on a slide gate. Uh, a swing gate would be exactly the same, except for you just have to make sure you're off the swing path of the slide gate. So you'll see that um, as far as an exit loop on, on gates, uh, you have options. You can be either looking at the front of a vehicle as they drive towards the gate, um, like this kind of situation, or you could be uh, you know mounted off the, looking at the side of the car. They have both options. Um, most of the guys for exit loop will use it like this because it gives it'll pick the car up a little farther off the gate it gives the gate more time to open so that they don't have to wait as long once they get there um but we can be used in either situation whatever uh the dealer needs to lay it out as now this also has basic programming suggestions for if you're using it like this or if you're losing it like this and then um, you know, basic information on things to look out for as you're going through the setup and, and, and design. So this, this will be a nice uh, resource as far as if for whatever reason, um, you know, it's easier than getting a hold of us. We, we absolutely can walk them through this as well, but this is a resource for you guys. Um, this next tech drawing is for vehicle protection on a slide gate. Um, same thing, a swing gate would be very much the same. Um, I think there's a tech drawing in here for that, but it's just showing you basic layout of what they're recommending, 28 inches off the moving parts, looking directly across, uh, you know, at 20 inches uh, to the drive surface, four inches off the road is so very specific and programming. Um, so it can help your guys help speed up the, the dealer's um, install in the field if, if he wants to do this in advance. Um, I had mentioned shadow loop or center loop. Uh, also, we have a lot of options in covering the swing path for a shadow or a center loop. Um, you'll see primarily this. Number two is primarily the one looking at the front of the car as they're coming through or at the back of the car. Um, or this side where they're looking at the front of the car as they come through the swing path. And basically making sure that uh, this gate doesn't close if something's setting in the swing path uh, of the gate. And then swing gate vehicle protection. So between if you used one of our sensors looking through the swing path and you use uh, sensors as vehicle protection on the outside edge of the swing path, you could thoroughly, uh, you could be confident that you'll cover every zone of this gate and make sure that it's not going to close on a vehicle. Um, so I wanted to make sure you guys knew that we do have these uh, designs out there that it'll just make it a lot easier uh, and give your your dealers confidence and, and just kind of give them ideas of how they can install it. Um, we also can work on barrier arms for activation, uh, barrier arms for um, barrier arms for vehicle protection. 
So we're looking under the arm, we're looking mounted on the side of the operator, looking parallel with the arm, we can work both ways. Uh, and it just basically gives you best, best uh, case scenario on how to install it and little things to look out for um, as far as making sure it's gonna work for that zone. Okay. Um, also industrial doors. Um, I don't know how often you get into that zone, but um, if you guys regularly get into industrial doors, we can also work for those as well for both um, activation for exit or uh, making sure that, you know, if, a, if something's setting under this door that we, uh, you know, we're going to cover that zone. And this, this uh, diagram would also cover like an articulating arm, um, you know, as well as, as uh, both sides uh, as far as vehicle protection. Now that's that's the uh, tech drawings, the install guides. There's also, we've uh, come up with um, a wiring option just to give you guys, uh, dealers, a little bit of a hand. Um, it's not fully complete on all the manufacturers out there. You'll see we, we have a handful, but basically where we come up to is, as of right now, there's three uh, boards for um, automatic. Uh, these are all exit loops. Um, there's a D, there's two DC boards and one AC board. And then basically they choose, uh, there's a red one or there's a blue board. So if they know it's DC and it's red or blue, they can come in here and know exactly where from our sensor to their operator of how they're going to get power and how they're going to um, wire it in for an exit loop. So you'll see this will help a lot of just the basic calls as well um, of knowing, you know, helping the dealer know where to go with that. Um, same thing with, uh, with, with Door King, um, this it would be for a, a reverse loop, basically a supplementary vehicle safety is where we're using this as. Um, and then we're saying here, because of Door King's not supplying DC power out for the accessories that we must use our own power supply. Um, and so basic information for that, but, th but these little things like this will help uh, solve your dealer's pain points. Now, um, I had mentioned the three of us, um, Contact us under that optex vehicle of optex-vs.com. Contact us, and um, then you'll see the the contact information for all three: uh, uh, me, Daniel, and John, and then a basic cutout of what area we're covering. Um, and and then um, you know that way you know who to reach out to and who's going to cover that area. In case you're selling to someone on the west coast that needs support, it would it would be me. Um, and so just kind of a, a good way to lay, lay out and see what you're working on. Now, um, the last one I really wanted to touch on was the OAM Explorer. Um, as far as this, it, this goes, it's primarily was designed to be an industrial door, uh, both for exit and protection of vehicles and people. Um, it has three sensors in one device, um, or let me refresh, it has two sensors with three outputs on one device. Very unique in that it can do an exit loop, basically, and it can do a vehicle and people protection loop across the threshold to make sure that this isn't going to close on somebody. But it doesn't primarily have to be on industrial doors. We have, we have guys using these in parking situations in and around barrier gates or, um, or uh, ticket machines. Uh, if you guys are selling to the, that market where you're, you're giving accessories for, you know, for those types of devices, this thing uh, can be mounted anywhere from seven feet to 19 and a half feet. So very universal for putting it in parking structures or, or different kind of indoor situations where you can mount it above the center of the lane. Um, very unique product. It had, like I said, it, it has two sensors, a microwave sensor and an active infrared sensor. And those, that sensor can have three different outputs. And I do want to share this video because it probably will make more sense than me trying to explain it. So let me let this go real quick. Uh, just for a couple minutes, it looks like it's less than two minutes. So um, the the the, um, the active that's the microwave. So the little sensor on the right is adjustable pattern, and it gets bigger whether it's higher, it's mounted. Um, it does have a pre notification zone. That's the second zone, and then it has an active infrared for vehicle and people safety. So. It has um, vehicle cross traffic elimination. So you can have it designed to ignore people and vehicles going not towards the door. Um, and also uh, you can have it sense both. Uh, if you want it to detect anything on this side, you can do that as well. 
Um, this is that pre-notification, the, the bigger ring that it's showing, this first ring right here is made to where you can send an output to like an audio, video, audio or visual device and make it make notification on the other side of the door that something is coming towards the door. And then that, the, the, this is showing the primary safety zone that's looking at the threshold. So, um, so it just only opened on a vehicle, but if this guy comes and walking under the threshold, that active infrared is going to pick him up and make it reverse and not allow it to close on that. We're used to all the time on high speed doors, roll up doors, barrier arms, um, very cool product. And this is basically just talking about, uh, that it's all the programming is done through an app and, and synced with the sensor from an app. And so it's all done through a smartphone. Okay, let me get out of here. So, um, so this very unique in that it has, it has, a, it has a pre-notification zone, an outer ring that goes out to about twenty-eight feet. It has a, a primary activation zone that can reach out to about twenty-six feet. Then it has an active infrared that can cover the safety across the threshold, and so you can use all three of these outputs you could use one of these outputs or two of these outputs however whatever the dealer needs to use i haven't actually seen someone use all three i have um, a lot of guys use both the activation and the safety but i haven't had guys use all three as of yet but it is there in case they need it um i want to stop sharing and see if anybody has any questions on this explorer Anybody have any questions there? I don't see any questions that have come through, Jason. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you guys are aware because that sensor uh, in this market has solved a lot of headaches for guys as well, as long as you can mount it above the, the center of the lane. And um, and so that's primary, primarily uh, the bulk of our products that we're sending from, you know, our vehicle sensing division and you guys are reselling. Um, I just want to see if there's any other information or other questions. Um, we do have one other sister product to the OVS 01 GT. I am hesitant to talk about it because it's only used in a very specific situation and it can cause problems if you use it other than that specific situation. And that would be, let me just share, uh, that way you guys can know what I'm talking about. Okay. And that is gonna be the OVS-01CC. Looks very similar to the GT, very similar setup, very similar mounting. This um, is primarily used for car counting it does have a couple advantages over the GT. Um, it can detect out to 26 feet as opposed to 18 feet. It can detect vehicles going up to 35 miles per hour as opposed to 12 miles per hour on the GT. But what it gains in those couple functions, it loses in uh, being able to ignore people, being able to uh, dial it in for a specific automated gate situation. The GT, if you're using it on an automated gate, the GT is the go-to. The only time I would say otherwise is if you're putting this on a remote gate that they don't care if it triggers on a duck or a dog or a person or whatever. Um, then you could possibly go to the CC just for the range alone, the 26 feet. But, but only use it in very specific situations where they just need the range and it doesn't matter if it sees people. Um, other than that, always go to the OVS 01 GT. And I stopped sharing. Uh, anybody have any other questions? Yeah, if anybody doesn't have any questions, we'll probably wrap it up a little bit early today, let you guys get back to your uh, work. Oh, we have another question here. Mm -hmm. um, or it's just a, another advantage of the OVS 01 GT versus a loop, they do not have, they do not have to shut down, to shut a lane down. 100%, you do not have to shut a lane down. What does that mean? Yeah, uh, well, like when I was showing you on the, um, the actual, let me share and it'll make it easier to understand. Okay. okay um, when you're doing ground loops, uh, 
in that labor time when you're cutting these the ground on here you, no cars can drive over this and when it's when the silicone is drying and all that you cannot you have to basically shut this lane down or or in this situation would be the the end user can't use this driveway until all that's cured and, and set um okay. so that lane is basically unusable until that time frame usually like i was saying before four to six hours is kind of the, the minimum on that so um that lane is down until that's up and uh, up and running it makes sense thank you yeah um something else i wanted to touch on is um i mean i was being being very pointed that this is really a replacement for ground loops but it does have a distinct advantage beyond ground loops ground loops are looking for metal you can program our sensor to detect people um so we can also make it say okay uh the end user I've, I've had it at times, maybe like a quarter of the time, guys will say hey, the, the end user wants to walk to his uh, his mailbox and he wants to walk in front of the sensor and activate it. We can make it do that by just changing a setting. And so it's very unique in that it's it it gives, gives you more options from a ground loops is that you we can do that with it as opposed to ground loops are very specific. It's only looking for metal and a certain amount of metal. Any other questions on that? Anyone else? Well, thank you guys so much for your time. I yeah. appreciate it. Appreciate you, you guys. Helping us with our webinar today. This was the first AIDI webinar, so hopefully we'll be doing more in the future. But appreciate you guys being the, the guinea pig here test for us. We appreciate your time and expertise on sharing us you know, information about the sensor. It's, all, it's new to everybody out there, but hopefully we'll be able to, you know, present your product in a more professional manner and understand it more and know where to direct clientele, which would Absolutely. be awesome. And, and if any kind of assistance, you guys, please reach out to us. We're, we're here to help. We're, we love helping you guys. We help, love helping the dealers, uh, we're, we're whatever you guys need, okay? Yep. So um, once I click out of this webinar, we'll be done. About an hour afterwards, the recording will be ready and it will be sent out to all people who attended and then it will also go out to those who weren't able to attend today. So appreciate again all you guys taking time from your busy day to to attend. Hopefully you found it beneficial and we'll uh, schedule more webinars here in the future. So thanks again, Jason. Uh, really appreciate it. You all have a great day. Thank you. All right. Bye now.